Ed Dame's predictions, an event that he called a shot across the bow, where, where the solar flare wouldn't actually hit the Earth, but it would be, it would be a, a, a major wake-up call for people on Earth that this, is, that this could be a problem in the future. Two weeks after Major Dame's prediction, on November 4, 2003, it happened. An unprecedented solar flare was recorded by SOHO satellite. NASA estimates that it was an estimated X-45 flare, the largest in recorded modern history, and it made international news. The event was so unprecedented, it even took astrophysicists by surprise. The flare indeed shot right across the virtual bow of Earth, just as Major Dames had described. The flare passed directly across the orbital path that we take around the sun. According to some researchers, if this particular incident occurred just three months later, during February of 2004, it would have ended a great portion of life, changing the world as we know it. Solar physicists were between their nails because they, they, they were very, very concerned that the sun had been very quiet for so long and this was not predictable. And so because it was not predicted, it did not follow the solar cycle. They were afraid that the sun might be doing something uh, erratic. And that's when we began to see in the press and the news all these warnings about what major solar flares would do to the planet, to communications, to power grids, etc. And then in the last few months, we've seen that the sun's been relatively quiet. And now the scientists are saying, well, maybe the sun is going into a long period, years of quiescence. It's going, to, it's, it's going to quiet down, and that's what we're seeing. And that might create global cooling. That may be why there's been the, 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 the storms, the snowstorms have been so severe, is the sun's quieter and not as active. Folks, it's the calm before the storm. It is the calm before the storm. A solar flare that could have caused a catastrophic electromagnetic pulse, or EMP, barely missed Earth about two weeks ago, according to a former member of the Congressional EMP Threat Commission. Peter Vincent Fry, who served on that commission from 2001 to 2008, said that the event, called a coronal mass ejection, could have inflicted damage comparable to the 1859 Carrington flare, which was so severe that it caused telegraph lines in Europe and North America to melt. NASA did a study and its findings are now out. We're not talking about global warming, a brand new government study on the very real destruct uh, destructive threat of solar storms. I want to show you New York City at night. Times Square drove through here at 8 o'clock last night. The streets are empty, but the electric power grid would be wiped out by the current. Lights and computers, transportation, hospitals, all would go down. The study warns it would be a disaster. Joining me now is F. Michael Maloof, former security policy analyst in the office of the Secretary of Defense and author of the book, A Nation Forsaken, EMP, The Escalating Threat of an American Catastrophe. Michael, welcome. Thank you. Um, just to define terms, electromagnetic magnetic pulse? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's an, ex an intense burst of electromagnetic uh, particles. Uh, that come descending on down and that can absolutely destroy all of our electronics if they're unprotected. Isn't, um, back in the 80s, the, the northeastern power grid shut down one day and nobody knew why, and, and it turned out later it was a bunch of particles coming from the sun, as I mm -hmm. recall. Yeah. Isn't that a kind of a mini example of EMP? Well, we have a, a mini EMP could be from a solar burst. Uh, we're, we're now going through one of our most intense periods, 11-year uh, cycle of the sun, and uh, NASA has raised all kinds of concerns about that, especially if we were to get a direct hit. Wow. And that's and that's basically it comes out of a sunspot, and so yes. it just it's like yes. the, the sun is blowing it out somewhere in that 360 well, degrees if we happen to wander through that. Exactly. If it comes from approximately the middle of the sun, it could. Uh, result in a direct hit on, on Earth. Some of these solar flares can be two to three times larger than the Earth itself. Wow. And what would it do? It will uh, fry your electronics. Oh, you see, the United States is, is a technology-based society, whether it's our uh, uh, internet, our telecommunications. We have very critical infrastructures. They're all dependent upon electronics. You've said that a cyber 9-11 is not an if, but a when. What would a cyber 9-11 look like, and how soon could it happen? 
it could happen uh, imminently. Uh, what would it look like? It could take many forms, but uh, let me just give one that may come to mind, which is uh, what happens when the electric grid goes down. We saw that during Sandy, and you see how that impacts everything from the ability to uh, heat uh, homes, to the ability to pump gasoline, to the ability to have lighting at night, everything. So uh, when we look at the nation's critical infrastructure and uh, where it is vulnerable, one of the vulnerabilities is through the cyber and the network cyber world that we live in. Uh, so uh, we have been, you know, kind of trying to get this word out. Uh, the Secretary of Defense has, I have, the Attorney General has, the Chair of the Joint Chiefs has, saying, look, uh, we, we shouldn't wait till there is a 9-11 in the cyber world. There are things we can and should be doing right now uh, that, if not prevent, would mitigate uh, the extent of damage that could be caused. But what else do viewers foresee coming over the horizon? We picked up the use of nuclear weapons on the, on the Korean Peninsula by the North, North Koreans. And this event would be one of the last events that humans recognize before the, the kill shot sequence begins. We haven't seen that yet. This prediction was revealed years ago to the public on the Coast to Coast AM radio show. At the time, the nation had zero nuclear capability, and the notion that they would use a nuclear weapon as an act of war was widely believed to be absurd. Sharp new warning of all-out war for the first time, the mysterious and secretive nation has threatened a preemptive nuclear strike against the U.S. It comes as the U.N. approves tough new sanctions. Thousands upon thousands of North Koreans rallied today around a North Korean general delivering that stunning threat. A first strike nuclear attack with a vow to engulf Washington, D.C. in a sea of fire. They're threatening a nuclear preemptive attack. Never done that before. The young North Korean dictator, despite the diversion of Dennis Rodman's visit, now lashing out against the U.S. and South Korean military exercises and today's new stiff U.N. sanctions. Analysts say North Korea is still years away from perfecting a nuclear weapon, but they are getting closer all the time. The threat of a preemptive strike on the United States, even if that's not possible now, is terrifying. You, you have to take this seriously. North Korea does not yet have a missile capable of hitting the continental U.S., but America has satellites in space, radars at sea and on the ground, designed to detect a missile launch, then dozens of intercepting missiles could be fired from California or Alaska to take out enemy missiles, even nuclear ones, before they reach America. But the system is far from foolproof. However, the most immediate threat tonight from North Korea is far more conventional. They could fire on South Korea, America's ally, like they've done before. But there is another event that remote viewers fear the most, a sign that the kill shot is imminent. What would be that final recognizable event just prior to the, to the kill shot sequence? The best that we could come up with, pushing ahead, the best that we could come up with was a, what appeared to be a space shuttle being forced down by what appears to be a meteor shower or something like that. It's expected to be one of the biggest cosmic events we have seen in decades, the so-called Comet of the Century, photographed by the Hubble Telescope. Scientists say the head of that comet about 3,000 miles wide, the tail more than 57,000 miles long. The center area called the nucleus is three to four miles across. That's big. Uh, it was discovered by a Russian amateur astronomer last September. They've been watching it ever since. And Tariq Malik is the managing editor of Space.com. Back with us in the studio. Good morning to you. Uh, where's she going? Well, uh, it's basically out kind of beyond Jupiter right now. It's coming in uh, to the inner solar system. It's going to swing around the sun. It's going to flare up, hopefully be one of the brightest things we've seen in the night sky. So years. it's not coming near the planet Earth. It will, it will be nearest Earth after it swings past the sun in December. Still millions of miles away, no threat to Oh, I got you. Okay, so that, that, that's taken care of. Yeah. I'm reading through your, your comments here, Tariq. You say most promising, um, unpredictable, 
but promising yet again? Yes. In what sense is it promising? Well, this is uh, this promises to be the brightest comet we've seen uh, in the night sky in years, if you know, possibly even decades. You know, that's why NASA, other scientists are calling it the comet of the century. They don't know if it will perform. They don't want to basically say it's going to happen, and then something happens with the comet on the way in. It breaks apart. It fizzles out. It burns up by the sun. That could happen. Uh, so if it survives that pass through the sun uh, in November, then on Thanksgiving night, we can see something. So we, we have some time to watch this thing still. We'll remind you as the day gets closer so you can stock up on snacks and beverages, but a comet is coming, a big and brilliant comet arriving in November 2013. It could potentially be 15 times brighter than the moon and visible in broad daylight over the U.S. Regardless of how long it is the period between the shuttle event and the beginning of the kill shot sequence, we know as viewers, and, and uh, I have personally uh, viewed this particular event on a number of times because it's, it's so powerful, that all of these warring parties that we see on the planet, all these many wars, that on the ground, all of these these soldiers look up in the sky. They all look up. So something is happening in the sky. In fact, there's probably unprecedented atmospheric effects that in a recorded history, perhaps unrecorded history, there's been events like this, but nothing in recorded history. Something happens in the atmosphere that has not been seen before because every, all of these soldiers are looking up and then they go home. Their priorities change. They, they go home. So that's when it starts. It's still very far away. It'll get brighter in the night sky soon. It'll be uh, this summer maybe visible to the naked eye. Really? Yeah. Okay, so we don't need a telescope? Uh, you we don't need Hubble? We can go in our backyards and watch this? That's the best thing about this. You know, starting in September or leading all the way up to Christmas, uh, it'll, it should be a, an amazing night sky sight. It could, it, its tail, long now, could stretch across the night sky if it, if it... What, what, what would we see if it behaves and acts the way you expect? Well, if it flares up, you know, it would start out as a bright kind of fuzzy speck in, in the night sky. As it gets closer and closer to the sun in November, it would just get bigger. The tail would sweep out, uh, you know, possibly covering much of the sky. Uh, it could be brighter than the full moon uh, at night. Uh, and uh, it is just could be just an awesome. It could be really cool to watch them. Yeah. This could be quite spectacular. This, this to me, is probably the sky watching event of, of the year. Well, let's hope it lives up to its title. There shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. And upon the earth, distress of nations and perplexity. The sea and the waves roaring. Whole new meaning on that song lyric, Black Hole Sun. Scientists at NASA have given us some amazing images. And they've discovered there's actually an enormous dark hole over our sun. What you're seeing is, this is three and a half million degree plasma erupting from the surface of the sun. This part that's missing, the reason it's dark, is that whole chunk of the sun basically ripped off, blew out, and is coming our way at about two million miles an hour. Our way. Our way. Comets have the ability to affect the energy output of the sun. When that happens, we then get uh, a, a severe weather on Earth. So there's many aspects to the, the effects that these large comets can have on the solar system and on planet Earth. But the bottom line is, comets are not dirty snowballs. They are a very energetic plasma interaction of an asteroidal rocky body with the solar electric field.